gonna be? Who's it gonna be? <laughs> oh yeah, it is my bitch. <laughs> Remember the ball must travel ten yards. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Game time, Brian, otherwise known as the mailman. But not today. Not today. We are not mailmaning it up today. Mail will get delivered, though, just not by me. Me and the missus are headed to her father's or her parents' house, who is. The house has been sold. I think it closes sometime next week. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So, people are buying some of the stuff. Some of the stuff that's left. And uh, we're going from there, everybody. So, yes. Rise and Grind. I just saw, I didn't watch any of it, that my Phillies lost again last night. Oh, I forgot my sunglasses. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah, you seem broken up about it. I got built-in sunglasses. Yeah, you got the transitions because you're blind as a bat. That's right. That's right. So, we're heading to the house. It's just, it's literally a 10-minute drive, so we're good. We're good. People are going to be there 8.30 and 9 to pick up stuff. But, you know, the other kip, the, 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 uh, the hits keep on uh, hitting right now at Cowboy Training Camp, but nobody's out for the year. It's some nicks, minor bumps and bruises. Um, but I just want to give a shout out. I hate doing this sometimes, but listen, Eagles had 50,000 fans there last night at open practice. Mark Holmes, at Mark Holmes. I'm going to at you in this video. The Eagles had 50,000 fans at open practice. I can't speak for you, Mark, but I can only assume as you're getting ready to go to Oxnard, your flight leaves tomorrow. I hope you have a safe flight, my friend. Um, I'm envious of an organization who gets all the work out of the way, for the most part, and gets on the field and you could actually enjoy. Listen, Eagles fans know. They're all going to tell you 13 wins, 14 wins, we're going to the Super Bowl. They know there's no guarantees for anything. You're not the favorite to go to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm not saying you're not, but your defense is pretty, pretty, pretty. There's a work in progress. Well, Lou Branch, you're a work in progress, my friend. That's what we're going to say. Offense is going to need to score a lot of points, but... At least, Howie Roseman identified that Hassan Reddick was going to be a problem financially. Now, listen, I think Hassan Reddick will be there by game one. The rules are in place for the Jets for him. He has to be. And maybe they decided, and hear me out, Eagle fans, it's not that they didn't want to pay the 25. Maybe they're looking down the road. Kind of like what Howie Rose, uh, what uh, Stephen Jones needs to do, look down the road and see what contracts are coming up. Like Dallas says, they're on Bland. I'm on record saying they're probably going to lose them. Or you're going to have to. You can't keep everybody. Assuming Dak is there, Deron Bland is going to have to go. That's just a fact. Um, but again, if Dallas were to do contracts a little differently, maybe not. But I'm not saying that Howie didn't want Hassan Reddick, why wouldn't you want Hassan Reddick? I, especially now that you're seeing Huff is not doing bad, people, but not flashing. He's not, you know, it's early, again. But I'm just saying, he probably looked at the, uh, you know, the pace, the scale, and um, he said, hey, listen, this guy's an aging player. We can't afford to play him. He ain't going to get 25 people. He may get 22, but he ain't getting 25. I'll be shocked. It's all about the guarantees. We'll see what it ultimately comes in at. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. But I am envious as a Cowboy fan. Listen, as a Cowboy fan also, we get all the negativity. You see it. Eagles are always the darlings in the 
in the mainstream media. That's just the way it works. Hating on the Cowboys sells. It does. So I, I kind of feel like it's a pile-on situation. Everything, everything's piling on, you know, and um, it would be nice for my front office to get everything done and in order and when everybody's on the field, you can just talk about what's on the field. But no, this organization refuses. That's that's my opinion. The culture of not winning in the playoffs, everybody wants to blame Dak. The culture starts with the front office, people. The culture starts with the front office. It's a culture. It's a winning culture. Now, that's just how I feel. I don't know. Am I dumb? Go ahead. Be nice, but tell me I'm dumb. Like, you know, am I dumb? That's fine. You can tell me I'm dumb. Say, game time, you're dumb. Sorry. I won't be mad at you this time. I might come back at you. But, um, you know, I just kind of think that, you know, when they get into a playoff situation against these really tough teams, in the end, these players are like, now, I know they're not taking contract in the playoffs, but I don't know. In the back of my mind, it's like, well, hold up. They're not sticking their neck out for me or taking a chance. What's this guy doing? He's checking his trailer. Oh, his engine fell over. Oh. On that, the back of the trailer. That's not good. His <laughs> engine fell off. Oh, no. He's pulling it. I'm just making sure I clarify. Oh, nice. That nice. Trailer. Let, me get, let me get some of this uh, nature's fuel. Uh, but anyway... That'll be my thumbnail. I'm going to have a picture of the 50,000 people at the Lincoln Financial Field. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like uh, a little envious. But, you know, the big question is how long is he going to be out? He's going to get paid. And whether we pay Dak Prescott. But I wanted to throw this out there. I mentioned it last night. And... This, these are two of my realistic Dallas Cowboy fans. Are we going to say Trey Lance is 100% can't play? Here's my question to you. Is there any possibility? See, this is what I don't like. Without a new deal for Dak, let's say Dallas starts out 3-3, three and three, which I think they can. And I don't think that would be the worst thing. If they can get 3-3, three and three, I think they're going to be fine because their schedule lightens up a little bit. God forbid they're worse than that. What are the odds that they bench Dak just to say, hey, we're benching you, uh, you know, or even in the preseason, right? You know, you know, let's say, like, in the preseason, they'll say, well, listen, we've, we're not going to be able to reach a deal between Dak and the Cowboys. Dak comes out and says, hey, listen, I'm a, no more contract talk. We're going to just go into the season. I want to hear from some of you Cowboy fans. I know I want to win, but would the organization tell Mike McCarthy to, to bench him and tell him to hold a clipboard so we can get a good look at Trey Lance since Dak's not going to sign here or Dak doesn't want to sign a contract? Maybe Dallas is offering 57 or 58, right? And he's saying no to that. He wants to, you know, he's basically free now. He can say no to whatever, but he don't play for money. Like, you know, I get it. He don't play for the money. But he feels obligated. You know, he feels obligated to uh, get the most he can get for the players and the players' union. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. Oh, I just got queasy. Oh, man. But there's a spiteful part of me that would say, okay, Dak. Now, again, I don't know what they're offering him. There's a spiteful part of me that says... And I know that Trey Lance is not looking good. But at the end of the day, that's why they should have traded Drack. Or I know he has a no trade. They could have worked something out before the draft. Got some kind of compensation. That's where the front office is failing this organization. You don't let a guy like Dak Prescott start a season without a contract. Because then he ain't going to sign shit. And he's going. you're going to have to pay 70, which no thank you. You know what I'm saying? 65, 68, whatever. If he gets totally free next year. Who's to say? Dak, hold a clipboard. You're the better quarterback, but we tried to work it out with you. You're holding out for the most money. I don't blame you, but we need to do what's best for our, yeah, for our organization. We're going to start Trey Lance. 
for good or bad, and then you bring in Drew the five, six, seven win season, right? Then you're in the area where you could get a good contract or Trey Lance balls out and you got your quarterback. Maybe you still draft one, right? At the bottom of the first round. Or, yeah, whatever. And you have Trey Lance and somebody else. You know what I mean? Like a part of me wants to say, okay, so you don't want to sign our contract. Assuming they're signing, assuming they're offering at least $55 million. Okay, I get it. You got to go above 55 because he's basically free. Even though he has to play the season and put himself in jeopardy. So, there's a part of me that says, hey, hold a clipboard. You'll be healthy for your free agency. You can go anywhere you want. But we need to do what's best for our organization. And we're going to start Trey for the good or bad. And go from there. Let me... I would rather do that than go with Dak Prescott not signing a long-term deal into a season. I know you think I'm crazy, but the odds of winning the Super Bowl are slim either way. I think it's more likely that Dallas gets out to a rough start and they bench Dak anyway with that weight of everything on his shoulders and the team's shoulders. God forbid we suffer an injury or a CD goes down, something stupid. Now it's like, well, why are we playing Dak? Now, I, they'll probably play Dak. I'm just throwing it out there that if we can't get a deal done, we need to find out from Trey Lance. Or do you think the preseason is enough to figure the Trey Lance out? Let me know what you think because I don't know. My emotions are all over the place when it comes to Dak Prescott. I wish he would stop answering those questions and say, we're trying to work out a deal. Stop saying, like, both, both sides are negotiating in the media. Both sides are negotiating. Jerry, you know, he wants to see more leaves fall. Meanwhile, the tree has no leaves left on the effing tree. And then Dak, well, you know, I got to do its best. You know, I could, you know, the greats end up on different teams. Okay, all those quarterbacks you named Dak have won a Super Bowl. My guy, I love you, but let's not elevate yourself to that point. And maybe that's what he hates about us Cowboy fans is us, you know, criticizing him. Unfortunately, the quarterback gets way too much credit. And way too much blame, but that's why you get all that dough to to be quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys or any team, for that matter. I know how to turn. I know where I'm going. What are you talking about? This is my town. We're up here. Yeah, well, you act like I don't know. This used to be my mail route. Wrong again. But all right, everybody, I'm coming up to my uh, destination. Um, so let me know what you think about, I'm a little envious of the Eagles and their 50,000 fans, everybody's excited, you know, and that's how it should be going into a season, and I'm a little irked that there hasn't been a decision one way or another, why are we waiting, let's get it done, if not, then, then let's just roll with Trey Lance, let's just roll with Trey Lance, that could hold a clipboard, I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, you know, but I'm spiteful. <laughs> but all right, everybody, I'll talk to everybody later. Don't forget tonight, me and Primetime Phil on Primetime Phil, 8 o'clock. I'll do another video later today. All right, I'll talk to you later.